Welcome to Blitz Chess number 16. In today's video, I'm going to play a Blitz game. I'm going to walk you through what I think. And your job as a viewer is to ask yourself, hey, what would I do in this position? Is he going to make the move, I think? So that sort of thing we're going to learn. And also very important, I have changed the name of this series. It was previously called Chess Explained by Master, but now I'm changing it to Blitz Chess um, because it's simpler. Okay, let's go. Okay, we found a game. We're playing against... Melga Bry, let's just make sure everything's fine. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. So we're going to play pawn to e4. We're playing with the white pieces. We're going to try to get um, our pieces out. Knight f3. G6, this is called the Pyrrhic defense, also known as the modern defense. Um, most of the time, you don't want to worry too much about how to call these defenses, rather than understanding. Of course, you want to understand them more than trying to memorize the, the names of the openings. Okay, c6, uh, usually black's plan is to go b5, b4, harass this knight, sometimes not b4. Um, but, like, as a as a whole, to try to expand in the queen side. Queen a5 is also played sometimes. I'm not sure about the opening theory in this uh, opening, but uh, I do know that I have to take out my pieces, so as long as I'm doing that, I'm not breaking any crazy principle, then I'm just going to play bishop d3. As far as I'm concerned, this is known as the 150 attack. Um, so we have the Pyrrhic defense, and against the Pyrrhic defense, I'm playing the 150 attack. Uh, 97 is played by black. I think this is a sensible move. Probably I'm going to play h3, bishop takes a 3, and queen takes f3. If black doesn't play bishop takes f3, by the way. Bishop a6, knight g5 is always going to be there. So if I get that bishop, I will get the bishop here. And on top of that, these pawns are going to be doubled, damaged structure. So against h3, I'm quite sure that black will take. And probably black's strategy revolves around putting pawns in the color of the bishop that they just missed. That being said, I'm wasting a little bit of my time, so I'm going to go for queen d2. Black is going to take here. I'm not sure. I'm not sorry. I'm not worried that my pawn structure is going to be a little bit damaged. Because at the end of the day, it is opening at the g file, which might be important if I want to launch a kingside attack. Okay, b4 happened. Knight a4 is... Sometimes the question is... For, for instance, knight b1 is out of the question. I'm not even going to consider that. That looks a little bit passive. After knight b1, my knight is not going to go anywhere. I have to move the queen, so that's not very... Um, that's not very attractive. So either knight a, it's either knight a4, sorry, or knight e2. So far, I think knight a4 is a little bit more active. It gets closer to the center. Or, sorry, I should say closer to to stopping black's counterplay in the queen side. Knight e2 is closer to the center. Um, hmm, it's a tough one. Knight a4, I guess that my, 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 my worry is to leave that knight a little bit out of play because knights in the rim are dim. The very famous saying that refers to the knights in the edge of the board. Um, knight e4, knight b6 is something that worries me too. Hmm. I'm going to play knight e4. It plays against c5, which is sometimes something a black wants to play. And if queen a5, it kind of provokes queen a5 in the first place. And uh, after queen a5, I would be happy to play b3, and then black doesn't get a5. That's why black went a5 directly, to which I'm just going to keep playing either, either h4. Hmm. Can I play h4? I'm going to play king b1, which is always a very useful move. Um, a very common saying in chess is that when you castle queenside, it actually takes two moves. The first one, of course, to castle queenside, and the second one to play king b1. Because your king is not entirely secure on c1. And now I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with my position. I can play f4, f3. Trying to make use of those double pawns. But I can, so, I can also play rook c1, c3. The question might black Black is going to pawn break on e5 and c5. I have to hurry up though. h4, not at gf6. I think that doesn't achieve h5 yet. So I wouldn't do that. I'm going to play f4. Improving my position a little bit. I'm also running out of time a little bit, so I have to be a little bit more careful with it. b3, knight b2 is an idea to get this knight into the game, but I think for now, knight a the knight on a4 is actually not doing that bad. I'm going to play f3, which is, was my plan. If black ever goes e5, I'm happy to undouble my pawns, so I'm not too worried about that. Knight h5, bishop h6, black is maybe put, putting some pressure mm -hmm. on f4, but for now, I'm not worried either. So I'm going to play... I'm going to keep going for my plan, which is rook c1 and c3. I repeat, black is probably going to be happy to go e5 at some point, even though it it does undouble my pawns, it gets some activity. But as soon as the center opens up, as a second thought, I think that my bishop pair should be pretty happy. So, always, always a little bit dynamic. 
I'm clicking a 1. I think that, once again, prophylaxis is, is useful in this case. I'm not sure if I want to go B3, because that would be opening up the diagonal towards that, so... Now that I think about that, I'm gonna probably gonna E5, close this thing, so... I have 14 seconds. Not ideal. But I think I like my position a lot. Bishop E4, Bishop D5. If E6, maybe I can take on D6. I mean, Rook A7, first of all, D5 is there, so Rook A6. And then after Bishop D... Ah, Bishop D5, E6, E6, D... Ah, that's interesting. So I'm probably going to play b3 then. And if this, then that. Very crazy stuff. As I said, like, things are getting a little bit spicy. Spicy. Okay. Yeah, I have to start calculating stuff here. I have to be careful. Maybe 6 I can take and play d5. Uh, maybe. Okay, that's played. Interesting. I'm going to take... I'm not sure if this is the best. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is going to get crazy. This is going to get crazy. If this b5 is there, if that, bishop c2 maybe, okay, b5, things are getting crazy, I think this I'm pretty happy, and if not, then I'm just going to take back. I'm pretty happy that black went for this, by the way. I think that there's more than enough conversation for, for that. Oh my goodness, okay, that wasn't very clever. Okay, I'm gonna have to give up that. All intentional, of course. C5, B6, that's going to get it a little bit exciting. Also have C5, C5, D5, which is also very exciting. I have D5 directly. Now my third is C5. Hmm. Rook C8, C5, this C6. I'm happy to get that. Even though C6, it looks not obvious that I'm taking because, well, this is pinned. I am taking because I'm taking after that. So... I'm just gonna take. I have how many pass pawns do I have? Three? Oh my goodness! What a dream! I'm gonna play b6, b7 next. I should have played b6 maybe directly. Ah no, c6 was hanging. Now I play b6. What an incredible position! I've never had such a nice position in my entire life. What a, what a sad statement. Oh, is this a queen trap? No, it's not. I'm too ambitious. Let's take with the knight then. Okay, let's take this. Let's play d6. This should be game over. I mean, pff, two past pawns. This is amazing. This is the best day of my life. Bishop a7 there. And queen c6 is also a threat, followed by d7. But something as simple as bishop f2. Like, I'm both winning tactically and strategically. And king g7 doesn't even work because of e6. And d7. Yeah. That was pretty exciting. I'm going to analyze this just after this. Don't worry. So it's just after the game. Sorry. What am I saying? Eight seconds left. Yeah, I can't. I can't build English sentences. Bishop a7 is one way. I'm going to play queen c6. I think that's the, the most principled way. d7 is a threat. Queen takes a8 is one of the easiest ones, I think. I think I'm going to go for that one. Liquidating everything. Tactics. Oh my goodness. Oof. Sorry for the shout. Oh my goodness, what a what a catastrophe. Once again, chess never 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 stops surprising me. Okay, I'm gonna go for the Oh my goodness, what is this? Now oh, I'm winning again. Okay. Awful. Everything is under control, guys, don't worry. Everything's under control. Queen B6 I was expecting, to which I, I would have gone King A3, Queen takes B1, C8. Win c3, probably I'm still winning, but very poor by me. Knight c2 was missed. It's always easier to, it's of course easy to miss your opponent's resources. Um, Let's go king, queen c1. Very safe. If a3, I'm going to go rook b3. Queen d4, queen b2. All of these things are, are, are important to, oh my goodness, is this a draw again? Oh no, it's not, sorry. Sorry, never mind. Bang, bang, there we go. No, I was surprised. I thought there was no way. I mean, of course, I calculated in three seconds, so it could have been that it would have been. It could have been a mistake. But okay, let's just take this pawn and get rid of all that nonsense, as Hikara would say. Queen h8. Sorry, that. There we go. And if queen takes, we're gonna promote the knight. Let's just play a3, right? Rook c1. What's the what's the rush? 
There is no rush. Okay, let's do this. Rook d1, d7, queen d4. I'm the happiest. That's a good move. I could have promoted there. Queen c3. I'm taking it very easy because there's no reason to. There we go. There's no reason to do anything crazy. And now I win. Oh my goodness, good game, Melga Woke. Okay, let's do the summarizing. So we played um, a perk defense with the white pieces. Uh, we played a 150 attack, uh, which I'm quite sure it's called. We castle queenside, and already here I was quite sure that going into the middle game, it was going to be a, a spy, uh, sorry, dynamic game. I, I've been spending way too much time with children. Uh, it was going to be a dynamic game because black might have, might have, or could have castled short side and opposite Castling is always going to be dynamic, or almost always. Um, I went f4 with the idea of f3, maybe this is too slow, but it seems like I'm always kind of waiting for black to go e5 or c5, and then if my pieces are in optimal squares, then I will be able to stop black's counterplay in a nice way and have a nice long-term advantage with the bishop here. But of course, all of this is very long-term, and when it comes to chess, everything's very concrete. So, I go c3, things are getting a little bit scary here. Once again, I'm just preparing things. King a1, my king is safer on a1 than on b1, so I don't see anything other than that. I don't see anything clear, so I'm just going to pr improve my position a little bit. c5, e5, closing the diagonal. I think that this, I, well, I see that this, my pawns are in a, in a well-placed for me to go e5 and create this solid um, blockade against this bishop. And at the same time, I'm also thinking, well, this kills many pieces. It kills this knight, sorry, kill this knight, this bishop. It kills this knight. I don't think that knight was going to go there anywhere, any anyway. But um, yeah, it kills many people, or many pieces, I should say. I go bishop e4 attacking this. It gets very dynamic. Now, I think that very little by little, the long-term... Uh, evaluation of the position starts mattering less and what matters the most now is just calculating move by move and whoever calculates the best is going to win the game ultimately so rook a6 i go b3 and well, as i said things are like both players i'm quite sure that my opponent also sensed this but both players now both white and black are are starting to get into this dynamic part of the game in which um whoever calculates the best as i said probably will win so e6 c takes uh b4 here i saw d5 and after takes takes i was happy with b5 um but this is once again like someone like hikaru nakamura would have calculated this and something like bishop b1 at the same time which is crazy and the only way you can get better at this is just doing it over and over practicing and practicing maybe b5 was better maybe knight c5 was better those are the moves that i calculated and that and i ended up concluding with this one so b5 was my candidate with knight c5 in a, in a split of a second but because i can't calculate those very well my intuition gave me this because i thought well potentially this is going to be something worrying it looks a little bit scary for black so i'm gonna play it but i think that maybe rook takes b4 was a little bit annoying here i should i would have played something like bishop c2 but i'm not sure if this is great it doesn't look that bad but um i, I definitely thought that, that that might have been that might have been pretty interesting well, actually, the computer likes my position. After a takes before, probably black has to do something about this. I'm not quite sure what. Queen d8. Yeah, so this is better for white. Interesting. So here already black made a mistake. Black should have taken on b4. Now, uh, even though... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to turn this off. Um, there we go. So I went b5. It got very crazy. Look at all these, my pawns. Actually, I've, I have I've probably never had something like this. I mean, we haven't traded any pawn. So... I, I have one, two, three. I mean, I have so many pawns. It's it's on un, uh, it's uncomprehensible. Unco so I I pretty much play rook c3, which is a bad move. But if black goes for this, I'm quite sure that I still have a better a better position. As amazing as that sounds, why? Because of my pawns. Like, what is what are the rooks going to do? Wait until I push? Like, there's no way. Queen b7 was a good try, targeting the only weakness out of all the pawns. But uh, yeah, it was it, once the once the pawns started pushing and I. I calculated a little bit here because c6 it looks like this is not a threat because it's pinned but actually it is for two reasons one i am attacking a rook two i can take the the rook back with my knight so here once i get three passed pawns it's going to be game over and eventually i actually blunder this but i think that this might be ah this is equal oh this is so sad queen c6 
And in this position, black had to play queen c5. After rook c1, e3. Oh my goodness. And actually, black is winning now. So I guess that I have to play some black king a1 or a3 myself. And this is equal somehow. Yeah. Something like this. And probably there's a perpetual. So very careless of me. I should have played something like... I mean, here I have d7. I have, I have, I have so many moves here. I can repeat. I can play queen c5 just to make sure. d7 is the best one. Yeah. I should have played that. Uh, I just thought that it, this was very instructive to, to, to liquidate the position. But it ended up being... A little bit silly. And after this, I thought that black was going to try queen b6 at least. To which I think I'm winning here. Um, but black went for queen b5, which is even easier. And then I, I queen and I just have to make sure that there are no, there are nothing, there's nothing I'm missing. And yeah, this is eventually winning. And eventually I just liquidated the position a little bit further. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions, um, please let me know in the comments. If you think that I missed something, also let me know in the comments. And I repeat... The name of this series is going to change from Chess Explained by Master to Blitz Chess. So that's why this is number 16. This is the first one I've mentioned as Blitz Chess. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.